Protesters storming the streets yet another day following the decision of the Michael Brown and Eric Garner cases. Protesters doing all they can to see that their voices are heard and they have been taken um, to every place from the streets of the major American cities to big retail stores now like Macy's, Apple, Target. And for the third straight night, demonstrators, they've continued in the streets of Berkeley, California. Protests, in fact, causing gridlocks on California's Interstate 80. A woman, in fact, went into labor in her car. Fortunately, an ambulance was able to make it through the traffic. Demonstrators have brought, have brought train travel to a crawl by actually lying on the tracks. And I can go on, guys. I, I saw the images last night um, with uh, at the Nets game at the Barclay Center where People who had bought tickets were even sympathetic with the protesters and agree here that they think the miscarriage of justice was done, particularly in the aftermath of the Garner case. That they're like, I just want to go to game. I got my kids here with me. Why do I got to fight to go through this gauntlet? You're seeing, in fact, a video of that right there. So I asked the question of both of you. I'll start with you, Dominic. Are these protests effective because they command the American attention for change, or they've now become disruptive? Well, the goal is to keep the story on page one, the story of alleged police brutality, of Michael Brown, of Eric Garner. And in that respect, they have been effective. The goal is also to keep the heat on law enforcement in terms of prosecutors to say to the feds, I mean, there's a reason why the feds right after the Garner case came out and said, we're looking at this. There is a reason. Pat Lynch told us today that uh, the feds told him they're going to expedite their investigation, the feds, into Garner. So that's why they're doing it. I, I hate to be, I hate to say this, but they're not really concerned about disrupting someone going to a basketball but if game. They, no. if they want to get their point across, they should be concerned with how people perceive it and how it's taken by really? people. Really? Yeah, they absolutely should. Oh, Otherwise, wait, wait, what's the point I'll of give you the it? best one. We remember Zuccotti, mm -hmm. um, you know, 99%, right? I remember at the beginning of that protest, they galvanized. This was after 08, obviously. People, there was a sympathetic American public to what they were saying when they said, I can relate to that. But then the voice versus the message, uh, or the messengers versus the message, I should say, they got mixed. And to a certain point, I know this much, if there's a big rally in Washington this weekend, you're going to listen to what the people there have to say and everything else. And I know the widows of a lot of, or the mothers who've lost children, or the widows who've lost loved ones in these shooting cases. You're going to listen to them. But if people are blocking, you know, the major thoroughfare, or a fire engine can't get to a fire, an ambulance can't get a woman to the hospital, just because they're blocking it, Andrew, it, it risks muddling the two. I get the traffic. The traffic is, is visceral. You see the, the, the crowds of people. We were glued to our TVs yep. as we were watching the feeds coming in that we had here. And it's it's kind of amazing. And and for their to their credit, most of these protesters, when ambulances or emergency personnel have come through, have said, I've even heard chants where they'll let the ambulance go by and saying, we don't kill, and they'll chant that. The vast the, majority the, have been nonviolent and everything else. The I part, agree. The but. part where, it lose, where I lose it is Macy's and Target and the Apple Store and the Barclays Center. And I'm not advocating, yeah. I'm not, you know, for any of those companies, but you're just interrupting people who are going about trying to shop and inside guys. the store. No, no, out on the guys. street is one no, thing. <laughs> out on the street guys. is one thing. Guys, there's a reason why the protesters for years, going back before the Garner case, there's a reason why it's called no justice, no peace. It doesn't mean that we're going to just protest uh, between 7 and 9 p.m. and we're not going to get in anybody's way. The goal of these protesters, the way they see it, is to shut it okay, down. But time out. And I that get, means Macy's. I get you sitting at lunch counters here where they won't serve you. Maybe it'll bother some of the other uh, diners in the restaurant, but damn it, what they were doing was wrong here, and you have to make a stand. You're not going to sit always in the back of the bus here. You're going to cause dislocation for it. You're making a message. But this ain't Selma, Dominic. This is in the middle of the Apple store. My question is, yes, you'll get some press for that. But even if you're trying to say no peace, at what cost? Forget about disrupting shoppers. You're now, they now come with a label. I, again, I come back to Zuccotti. Think about how it started and think about at the end how it got marginalized, about a bunch of dirty hippies. Whether it was fair or not, that's how they got labeled. I know that'll drive Brodsky crazy, but come on, be real, right? So my point is, we agree. is there a risk? 
a better way. <laughs> is Sharpton happy when he sees Macy's and um, Apple Store and the rest and people that have to go through the gauntlet to get into a basketball game? Does he think that helps his cause or hurts it? Well, understand, Sharpton is not officially connected to that. I know he's not, but is he happy or is he like, oh, God, that's only making my job I would hard. think he'd be happy if he well, keeps it Well, as long as he's not involved with it because he doesn't want to jeopardize um, his radio show. I mean, uh, you it's know. It's never a simple answer when I say Sharpton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tried, yeah. He doesn't want to jeopardize his television show. Yeah. So as long as he's not associated with it. But again, gentlemen, we need to understand the, the their goal is to stop, well, for a short term, to stop people from, you know, if you light up Macy's, it's going to make the, the authorities pay attention. That is their goal. But you're, almost, goal, but you're also, almost creating more sympathy for the authorities if people are saying, my God, I can't even get to work. I okay. can't even go see my kids. We, but saying, that's, but we that's, that's, our, that's our opinion. Well, we that's had, not the way we, they we had, see it. We had sound from people who were stuck in the traffic jams when the protests were hitting the streets late last week. And a lot of them were saying, yeah, it's an annoyance, but I understand it. It's part of, like, they, that was day need, one. they need to be heard. They need to be heard. But if, you know, at a, at a store or at a basketball game, you run the risk of losing people. And if you I, lose people, I, you I lose the message. Gentlemen. And there's always one idiot who decides not just to protest, but he's going to go break something and take something. And I got to tell you, sudden, the other day when I was down at Foley Square, when we were live, it was a little nerve-wracking to be in a crowd of several thousand people, and you're worried about whether or not violence may uh, jump off at any mm. second. But again, it's not just a slogan, gentlemen. There's a it. reason why it. it's called No Justice, No Peace. All right, well, No Justice, No Commercial Break here for you either. All right, go to Facebook, everybody, and Twitter, and answer our question. The same thing that I'm not getting consensus here at the table on. Do you think these protests now well into the fourth, fifth day and beyond do you think they are effective here, or do you think they've become disruptive, or maybe a little bit of both? Um, and again, this Saturday, December 13th, um, there will be an event down in Washington still developing, and as details become more effective throughout the week, we'll let you know about our coverage of that, that again coming up this weekend. All right, when we come back, broadcast journalist and colleague Steve Adubato, he's going to preview his interviews with Senators Menendez and Booker, what the Senators have to say about the unrest surrounding both Garner and Brown, immigration reform, New Jersey politics, a lot more after this.